And welcome inside the Sports Hour with Alex Garrett and Alex Garrett Podcasting on Can You Dig Sports Radio. Now, if you've been listening to the show for the last week or so, you've been noticing they're having the same segments every hour. And that's because I was recovering from a massive health issue. Uh, I am on the mend, thanks to my family and friends and my girlfriend. And now uh, I'm kind of fired up again. I'm kind of feeling that energy to talk, and, and that's a good thing, because if I'm not wanting to talk, you you know, I'm, I'm not feeling that good. So the tides are turning, the thing, things are getting better, and here we are on the sports hour. So where do we begin, huh? Well, we can talk about how the Cardinals are no longer undefeated, and I think losing against the Packers is a fair loss. I also happen to think, and I know they blew the game, but I happen to think that any team that carries a perfect game... In this kind of format, a perfect season, like an 18-week season, that's a lot of pressure. 16 games, now you're adding one more game. That's pressure. That's extreme pressure. I digress. The, um, the other thing that's burning me up is, do you know what's been happening with Alec Baldwin? since? And Leo gave me permission to kind of go off sports here and talk a little life, a little politics, a little culture, a little everything else. And I don't mind that either. Because what's burning me up today is not sports. What's burning me up today is the fact that this guy, Alec Baldwin, has his production staff literally quit with him, quit from his production company on the set of Rust. They had to get reinforcements in. And everybody says, don't blame Alec. Alec didn't know the gun was loaded. Okay, but this is his fault too. The loss of Helena and and the director's life-threatening injuries from the shooting that took place, it could be an accident, I don't care what you say. I mean, it was an accident. But I don't care what you say, there has to be some responsibility for this. Alec has to have some responsibility for this. Because it's his production company. It's his work. This is his movie he's producing. It's his staff that he hired. Why, what's going on that people want to leave? By the way, how did he not shoot it down production when other misfires were going on on the same set with the same movie? Alec, you're leading the project. You should know better. But the gun's in your hand. You say you don't know. You, you were honestly told it was a cold gun. Yeah, one cinematographer or videographer is, is dead one director has been released from the hospital, but he was he was close. I mean, that was that was not easy for the director of Rust, and his name is, by the way, as I look at Joel Souza. So Souza's okay. Helena is dead, and I saw a lot of my set life friends and production friend saying, well, this is this is not Alec. It's the fact that these people walked out on him and all these walkouts and the replacements. But you have to wonder, why'd they walk out? What was it about the set of Alec Baldwin's production that they didn't like to be part of? That's question number one for me. But question number two is this. We talk about privilege and how these athletes can get back on the field after roughing up their girlfriend or after, you know, Domingo, her mom, beating up his girlfriend in front of the MLB officials, yet he's able to pitch in the playoffs. There was eyewitnesses of that. So we can talk about privilege all we want. But I think, and domestic violence is awful. And I believe Domingo Armand served his time. But for Alec Baldwin to be so privileged to move back to New England four days after a shooting on his set to just skip town, I know he saw, I believe he saw the director and he comforted the family of Helena. Uh, Hutchins is her name. Is her name. But come on. For him to just show up again in New England this whole week 
And I'm not saying he doesn't feel something while he's shopping at Polo Ralph Lauren. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But Polo Ralph Lauren. I'm not saying there's not anything there to feel. And like, there's not anything there he's feeling. But I'm saying... How do you feel so privileged that you can go back to life as is after a traumatizing shooting like that on your own set? For God's sakes, if you were a good producer, you'd want to stay on that production company and comfort the people who are working for you. Not fly up to New England and be seen waiting for Italian food. On an outdoor pickup. What is this? What is this, I ask you? We talk about sports athletes paying millions of dollars. Yes, they have privilege too. But you know what? They at least, in my view, most of them play with a heart on their sleeve. And for their community. And for their families. This guy, Alec Baldwin, is ruthless in in my view. And, and okay, maybe I'm getting too hard on him. But the point is, is you don't go up to New England after a shooting, a double shooting on your set that you're producing a movie on. Someone made an amazing point today. They said, uh, would Clint Eastwood ever have these issues on set? Now, I have not gone into that detail. I don't know. But it is uh, it is interesting that they uh, they mention that because yeah, Clint Eastwood made a lot of movies, made a lot of westerns. Also became hated because he's a conservative. But he made a lot of great movies, Dirty Harry, uh, for one. Uh, I, I, there's so many to go through. I, I don't have the time, but no, Clint Eastwood, a fantastic actor. Alec Baldwin, and you can tell I've been trying to talk about this for weeks, for the week, because Alec Baldwin has got what I'd say a karmic slap in the face over the last week. He had people leave his set, walk out on the set. They were not happy working on that production. I imagine the misfires were part of that unhappiness. And then you've got, um, I don't know, the actual shooting and the shutdown of the production. But does that, and why do I say privilege? Because if it was anybody else, if it was a stuntman, if it was not even Alec Ball, if it was anybody else, that accident would be investigated more thoroughly. I don't think they'd let that person leave. I really don't. If this was a stagehands shooting, they would say, oh, the stagehands got something in on someone or the stagehands got uh, got it in for one of the people on set. The stagehands went crazy. We know how that story works. If it's no one famous, the person that does it went off the rails. Why? And again, it's the principle that people don't think Alec Baldwin went off the rails. But I think if his production itself, if his production itself had people walking out, it must have been off the rails. That whole production must have been off the rails. But if it was an underling that did this shooting, they would be investigated and looked at, their social media looked at, all this, that, and the other. Because it's Alec, no, no, don't touch him. Let him go to New England, Connecticut. Let him go away. Let him have some food at an Italian restaurant. Hey, let him even shop at Polo Ralph Lauren a week after shooting people. He would be, if it was a regular person, he would be investigated, probably jailed, until proven innocent. But Mr. Hollywood Elite over here gets a slap on the frickin' wrist and we're all supposed to say, don't blame Alec? No. I'm not buying into that narrative. I'm not buying into the don't blame Aaron, uh, Alec narrative. 
Because that's a dangerous one. Because when you don't hold him accountable, you then say Hollywood actors could get away with anything. Now, you could say that about OJ, right? I mean, it, it's... It just... We've seen cases after cases. But this one, with Alec Baldwin, has really grinded my gears because in the city, we know he punched out a person over a parking spot. Okay? He's been a loudmouth for 20 or 30 years. He personified that in Glen Gary Glen Ross when he said, always be closing. He would be cursing at the guys at Glen Gary Glen Ross, even the elderly guys, about how they're not making enough sales. You could say that's acting, but that was probably him in, in his own character, in a sense. He doesn't like people. He doesn't like the paparazzi. He doesn't like anybody. And so... When, when these athletes make more than us, they are privileged. When actors make tons of money and more than us, the elite actors, they're privileged. But privilege should not extend to getting away with not even being investigated for a shooting. Privilege in these capacities should it mean that just because, and I'll tell you this, um, did you hear about, speaking of privilege, speaking of, if you want to say white privilege, if you want to say student, scholar, athlete privilege, did you hear about Brock Turner? Do you remember Brock Turner? When he was this huge uh, swimming star at Stanford, I believe. And he had been um, unfortunately sexually assaulting, I think basically raping a girl behind a dumpster uh, at Stanford University. And this kid because he was a college athlete and was prestigious, I believe only got a slap in the wrist. Like, it was an insult. It was an insult. How about affluenza? Teenage kid running into people, running into, like, a mailbox and everything, driving because of influenza, affluenza, being too affluent. We see cases all the time. Around us, we do, but we never stop and say, "Well, I, uh, I wonder why these people are never held responsible." I think money has a lot to do with it. I think Alec Baldwin can settle with these, with the family of Helena Hutchins and the family of Joel. The director, Sousa, the director of Rust. And that's the problem. There is no, no accountability ever needed for these people if they could just pay their way off. If they could just pay their way off. And what they're doing with all the money they make with their SUVs and their incredible jets and everything else. They aren't exactly helping the planet. Even though Hollywood says, let's change the planet, these people aren't helping the planet. Alec Baldwin is not helping the planet. He's making havoc on it. He's killing it, literally just killed two people. And I don't care if you say it was by accident or not, he killed them. We have to get that right. He killed two people on set. Some people say, probably they're thinking, don't even say he killed them. Well, he did. Alec Baldwin killed people. And then a week later, he gets to go to fucking Polo Ralph Lauren. A week later, he gets to go to Ralph Lauren. 
while a family is grieving, while a director is recovering. Accidental or not, there's got to be some criminal negligence they could have here. And sports athletes have also been legal issues, as we all know. And then they are able to play through it and they're able to lawyer up and and win the cases. But, yeah, athletes fall into homicide and double homicide issues like Mr. Ray Lewis the night before the Super Bowl against the Giants in Tampa Bay. Ray Rice dragging his girlfriend through the elevator. And wasn't he reinstated like a couple weeks after that? And then you've got one. Well, Michael Vick and the dog ring. You have that issue. Uh, You've got. There's just been so many. How about Oscar Pistorius? I mentioned this before. Killing his girlfriend. Killing his girlfriend. And that was so sad because the para, the Olympian with two prosthetic legs doing what he did was pretty remarkable. However, however, it was tarnished when he shot his girlfriend, shot and killed his girlfriend. And he could say accidental, but that, I don't know. And then he couldn't see it was a night or something. I'm so, uh, oh, he thought it was an intruder. That's what it was. And that just, it it doesn't make sense. It also, I mean, yes, it doesn't make sense why Alec was given a hot gun, but at the same time it does. Because inexperience was on the set. And whose fault is that? Baldwin. Whose fault is it that Helena Hutchins is dead right now? Baldwin. And so, oh, and and, and the other one. The other one, speaking of guns, that really rocked New York City. So remember this club uh, quarters, I think it's called, uh, in the 50s on Lexington Avenue. Plaxico Burris. Plaxico Burris shot himself in a nightclub by accident. But he carried around a gun, and the gun fell to his shin or something and went off. Hit him in the leg. The Giants were 6-0 and that repeat season. That, that season after the, the first win against Brady. But when Burris' incident happened, that destroyed the momentum hugely. Drastically. So what's it going to be? Are we going to let people sit in their privilege and are we going to let them get away with things? Or are we going to pressure people like the authorities to do a further investigation on this Alec Baldwin incident? We don't see any pressure from the authorities like we're seeing pressure on Brian Laundrie's parents. You know what? Get off their lawn. Protesters, get off their lawn. The authorities will figure that out. But I notice there's no pressure on authorities that I'm seeing to get this further investigated. You know how I know that? Because Alec Baldwin isn't in an interrogation room right now. No, he's probably having his tea and morning breakfast in New England today. Because he can, because he could pay off whoever he needs to, to be quiet about this. And the authorities won't even bat an eye. Isn't that messed up? Isn't it messed up that a guy who killed two people can't even get investigated right now? Won't even be investigated right now, I should say. Now, maybe there'll be developments. But the authorities, I mean, I haven't seen many updates on this. But the authorities obviously didn't see enough or didn't want to talk to Alec. I don't know what happened. 
But the new me- where this was shot was in Mexico. The authorities down there obviously said, well, we're, we're washing our hands of this. It's an accident. It's an accident. But there's got to be more investigation. You want to investigate the January 6th people that did that insurrection, yes. But you don't want to really investigate Alec. You let him go to a freaking polar Ralph Lauren? Uh, By the way, why is it when someone mass kills, police takes him to a Burger King? Do you remember in South Carolina, the guy that shot up the church? In, Char- in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. And by the way, there's there's an update on that. Families of Charleston Church massacre victims reach an $88 million settlement with the Justice Department. But Dylan Roof recently got the uh, got the death penalty. And you know what they did after the police arrested him? He went to Burger King. What the actual F is that about? Is it beyond... See, I... It's it's beyond compare. But for now, I'm Alex Garrett. We'll talk to you later. And uh, some more sports stories coming up on Sports Hour.